All right, so hi, thank you for joining me today. Do you want to introduce yourself somehow? Well, I'm not going to tell you my username, but I will happily just speak on behalf of what opinions I have. I can't speak for all of the farms, but I can speak for myself at least. Beautiful. Well, I have a couple of questions for you today. Uh, I have a couple specifically about the dissociated and team pinata thread on Kiwi Farms, then just some about Kiwi Farms itself. And then we have a beautiful bonus round of questions from the viewers that people submitted. Can't wait to get to that round. Can't wait. Yes, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a fun one. So firstly, and the most basic question really is just how did you find out about Dissociated and Team Pinata and then how that brought you to Kiwi Farms? Um, well, in the first place, I noticed there were no negative comments in Chloe's comment section. So I started just YouTubing and Googling and trying to find someone who's been like, you know, maybe there's something not right here because something resonated in my soul where I was like, nah, this, this girl, it doesn't seem genuine anymore. And when I Googled her name, it's like the first hit that came up was the Kiwi Farms, which I have been frequenting at least since 2018. I just never bothered making an account. And uh, the first thing I found was Comrade's Thread, and it was a treasure trove of information. So did you um, already have an idea of what was going on, or you just found everything out from Kiwi Farms? Honestly, um, I had my suspicions on account of uh, knowing a couple of people in the mental health industry field. And there were a couple of things that just didn't seem genuine to me. And... I think that's what led me to digging a little bit deeper, because if I was the only one with a dissenting opinion, there had to be somebody else. Speaking of them, so everybody on the thread seems to have differing opinions on Dissociated and on Team Pinata, some think they're faking, some very few think that they're not, those people seem to get thrown off the thread pretty quickly, but they have been there, and different opinions about different controversies and things like that. So. As broad of a question as it is, what is your opinion on them? On Lynn specifically, I think she's a malingering grifter on account of the fact that her narrative changes so many times in order to suit her narrative. I have never heard something consistent come out of this girl's mouth. And as far as Nan is concerned, I genuinely believe the girl is mentally ill and should be probably locked away and institutionalized. I mean, if you're if you're talking about like sneezing on someone's crutch as like your, you need like godly assistance, not even mental assistance. And that is my personal opinion. No one has to agree with it. That's just how I feel. But uh, what would be your opinions then on the different controversies that have come out about them? Um, genuinely, I feel like Nen got caught in her own life. I hate even calling her Nen. It's so dumb. Her name's Chloe. So but if it was genuinely so deep to her, she would have gone and changed her name in the last year. If she genuinely wanted to be Nen, that would have been the name change she would have done. So personally, for me, it's all a performance. It is performative. She seems to milk the drama that comes from it, and it makes me just so freaking uncomfortable. Okay, so basically you're just um, of the opinion then that it's all just a big show, mostly. As far as she's concerned, yeah. So do you have any thoughts then on the people who have been involved who are not DID tubers? Not me. <laughs> I don't need to be insulted this day, but, um, you know, people who have somehow covered it or maybe even Sergio or people like that, not just the stands, because I think I've made my own opinions clear on them and I don't want to invoke their rage because they are really fond of death threats. And I just, it's not my favorite thing to deal with, you know? <laughs> Well, like I said, I'm sorry if my controversial opinions will rain down some hell on you, but um, I'm also not prepared to lie about where we are kind of standing. In the, I hate to say we because I don't speak to ev like for everybody, you know, but at the same time, I do believe that um, a lot of the people who have been covering the ongoing drama have been... Uh, I don't know, lacking in some kind of journalistic approach. I mean, God bless Grandad's Lounge. He really did do the most in exposing that bizarre controversy involving the book. But 
Um, at the same time, I do genuinely believe that it seems to be something that keeps in the realm of the perhaps not most stable mentally. It seems like we haven't had people who have had a completely unbiased approach in a non-journalistic standard, um, in a non-mental like mental health standard, as opposed to you, perhaps. Uh, so I agreed to talk to you in the first place. Oh, it's just basically you're just saying I'm fantastic. So we just <laughs> leave that question there. Well, yeah, I mean, at the same time, I also believe that you're one of the few people that is not afraid to say an uncontroversial, you know, like uncontroversial things and equally controversial things, you know. Um, I think the situation calls for a lot of critical thinking. And in this hug box PC culture world that we live in, it's not so easy to you know, say your point as you want to say it. And um, I appreciate the fact that you're willing to be a little, you know, controversial for the sake of a discussion. Mm, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. I genuinely wasn't fishing for a compliment, by the way. So everybody knows that. Everybody watching, I was not asking uh, It's just uh, the only reason why me as a Fonz user, if anyone was curious why I bothered doing this conversation at the f like in the first place. Well then, the other question I wanted to ask you was, there's been a lot of evidence or receipts dug up on uh, Nin and on Nan that have been up on the farm. So I want to know if you personally dug up any of your own evidence and if so, what it was, how you went about that. Well, I mean, I don't want to like give my own like position away too much. <laughs> it's a volatile place, and the fact that I'm even doing this uh, interview could result in some serious repercussions. But um, personally, for myself, I looked a lot into her um, her potential tax fraud because she was not registered as. Um, as a tax user in that she wasn't paying any tax and she was possibly receiving council housing and uh, disability funds for something that she had not filed for. So it was something that we were looking in from that regard. So, I mean, as, as a, um, in regards to her, uh, if you want to call it her mental state and possible family standing, that's something I had nothing to do with. I dug more into the legality of what she was doing. Um, yeah, because you mentioned as well about um, family and stuff like that. So, you know, back last year sometime, Dissociative's parents were doxxed, their address was leaked. Do you personally think that that was okay? The thing is, I cried wolf for some saying that we were doxing her and we're the big meanies on the internet. I personally, um, I, I joked about it and, you know, like drink, like bringing in someone in to dox her, but if you beg for it, it'll happen. If you want to cry wolf, eventually the wolf will come eat you. And Chloe cried all this severe doxing, which pray tell, what the fuck is a severe doxing? A doxing is a doxing is a doxing, you know what I mean? So the girl was begging for it for so long that someone eventually was like, I'll give you what I want. And um, she got what she got, is my opinion. I don't know whether or not it was necessarily the right thing or the wrong thing. However, I do know that she was provoking somebody in the farms that was going to take it into their own hands. If you want to cry wolf, somebody out there will make the wolf come you know if if you want it's kind of like what happened with chloe kardashian's bikini selfie that happened if you want to you know make a big deal of something and it gets removed people are going to dig in to see what you're looking you know like what you know what are we looking at right now and uh with chloe the thing is here's what bothers me about the whole thing the girl wants to sit there and tell her parents that she is a victim of Child, like ritualistic from a satanic cult and i mean she lives in middle england dog i mean for like let's just be real the fact that this like likely happened is probably next to null so it bothers me that her poor parents have to put up with this so in a weird way i do see her doxing as effective in that her parents might be like oh my god she's taking it way too far right now uh, the thing is you can't sit there and tell people that at three years old you were a victim to and ritualistic 
and expect people not to take interest in that and dig into it. You can't put your parents on the spot like that and then wonder why people dug into it. I just want to follow up from that a little bit because the um, the SRA stuff has been really topical at the moment. A lot of people are arguing about it, um, about whether it's real or not, about whether it's anti-Semitic or not. What are your thoughts on the whole thing? I mean, genuinely, I remember when I was a kid in school, there was a a genuine news article that went on where these kids had done a ritualist and actually murdered a girl in order to get it done. And that was a once in a lifetime kind of news article. That was when I was about mm, 16 and I have not heard anything since. So if this is as you know common as it's seeming to be presented in the world then oh my god we have got a problem to address in society however there is evidence that chloe was snooping around in different groups to have something to do with a or ritualistic satanic you know like that kind of shit and it just kind of leads me back to the point that i don't I don't want to say that it's un, it, it's just unheard of. I would not say it's as common as it's being presented. Well, moving on from that then, uh, one of the last things I wanted to ask you was specifically about Team Pinata. So they've left the internet. They're just gone. They were run off. And um, clearly the farms had a big role to play in that. Um do you think that would have happened without Kiwi Farms? Do you think maybe another site would have taken over and been the driving force in that, maybe Reddit or somewhere else? Or do you think it just wouldn't have happened? Absolutely not. Reddit has never done something funny in their lives, except for the part where they crashed the stock markets. That's the <laughs> only funny thing Reddit has ever done. And the problem with Reddit is they're like a massive hug box where they seem to just ask pat each other and yeah yeah, yeah no problem you mean are, are you genuinely expecting me to believe that if someone came through saying that man made snot like art that they would have taken that seriously no they sit there wanting to ask pat each other to you know like hug box and sit in circle jerk it's not it's not a place for a, a critical discussion until it gets to a point where the facts cannot be denied anymore, which is why men's current subreddit looks the way it does. But in the beginning, it was all men's great, men's not a liar. The Kiwi farms are like absolutely mean, and then, and then, you, you see what I mean. Like, and then, as the, the facts started coming down, it seemed like people started to slowly cotton on that this girl was making up lies. So it seemed like Reddit needed a driving force in order to make them disassociate themselves from cognitive dissonance in order to be able to have a critical discussion with themselves. So in short, no, I don't think another threat could have absolutely done it because the point of the farms is we come together to laugh. It was never meant to be something that blew up into what it did. It accidentally became a raging inferno as opposed to a quiet giggle. Well, unless you have any other things that you want to say about Dissociate and Team Pinata, I'm going to move on to my questions about Kiwi Farms in general. No, let's go on to those farms questions. So you said you've been on the site since 2018 or lurking or something like that. So what other threads do you go on? Uh, the thing is with the farms, there are so many different sites that you can frequent. Um, you can be linked to so many different kinds of news sources, different ideas of thinking. The thing is with the farms, there's no moderation. And I mean that in the best way possible in that no matter how simple minded or how extreme something you say is, you will always be allowed to say it. And it's in my mind, one of the last places on earth where you can actually have freedom of speech. Uh, whether or not that is to someone's taste or distaste, not my problem. The point is freedom of speech is allowed. You just have to accept the consequences of whatever you say. I think a lot of the language and I guess the freedom of speech, as you would put it, has led people to believe that Kiwi Farms is a hate site. And I saw it a lot when I asked people if they had questions um, for somebody on the farms 
that everybody was saying, uh, this is a hate site. I don't have any questions for anybody who would be on that kind of site. And similarly, a lot of people just hate the people on the site because of the language they use and some of the tactics that they use, like doxing, um, using slurs, racial slurs and things like that. So what do you think about that? Do you think it's a hate site? I mean, that's like saying all gays are because Jane Charles, like James Charles, like on, you know, boys, it's such a sweeping declaration. I'm a pretty normal person myself. I wake up, brush my teeth and go ahead with my job as I need to. Um, I will not sit and say all farms users are not degenerates, just like no person in all of life is not a degenerate. Um, I will. I, I would argue that people, you know, will say slurs, and you'll have people campaigning against it. But that will only make the person who says it scream it louder in your face. So it's a bit of a you know a win win lose lose situation. If you want to get offended by that kind of stuff, there are better places for you to be on the internet and to tune it out. You can block people and you can moderate your feed as you need to that's your prerogative but i do think that there is value in being able to see a radical side of view and being able to adjust your own standpoints on that as far as doxing is concerned um i mean some people say such horrendous things and do such horrendous things that are you know warranting a doxing however i personally don't care for doxing and i do you think it's funny to watch the reactions that come out of that, you know? So if you want to behave like a fool on the internet, c'est la vie. What will happen will, is what will happen. You're putting yourself out there. Public information is not that hard to find. Do you think then that level of anonymity on Kiwi Farms, because, you know, you're not supposed to use your name. Um, I've seen you're supposed to use a VPN and still there's all these rules not supposed to interact with people outside of the farms. Don't tip the cows. That's it, right? <laughs> I sound like such a boomer. Don't Jesus touch Christ. the poo. There you go. That. <laughs> so do you think that anonymity sort of leads people to be a bit more extreme than they would normally be? Absolutely not. Um, I would argue that I'm as opinionated in my personal life as I am on the farms. And I would probably wager a bit that most of the people on their farms are willing to say their opinion out loud the problem with the social media space is that if you say something someone else doesn't agree with that's terms for your account to be reported or terminated or something like that so um i can't speak for everybody but for myself and from what i've encountered we just we enjoy being able to say what we can say mm -hmm. I don't think anonymity has anything to do with it. I just think the uh, the prospect of being blocked and driven off of other sites is the the problem. I think there are some people out there who say things that might get them into genuine trouble in their private life, but I think it's a small minority. For the most part, the the thing is on the farms we've got a site called the Beauty Parlor, which is mostly where the bitchy drama goes down on. There are a hundred different subsections to the farms that have nothing to do with drama and are more to do with everyday news articles and current political affairs. And, you know, you so you can't compare the beauty parlor to the rest of the farms. It's like comparing a potato to a chair, you know, like one is more for like lounging in and like one is for eating. It's not the same. Yeah, I don't think people realize just how vast it is. I mean, I don't have an account, but I have tried to look for other threads and I got really overwhelmed really quickly because I didn't know where to go or what I was looking for. I thought it would just be like a little place to look, but no, it's it's vast. So but, um, yeah, like I say, I mean, there's news articles and current affairs and all sorts of political things that are being discussed about globally. So it's not just like an America thing or a UK thing, it's global. Well, that kind of brings me to my last question then just about Kiwi Farms, which is about uh, Chloe Segal, which I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce her name, but I'm not entirely sure. So um, this, for the people watching who don't know, this was uh, a trans game developer, if I'm right, who committed they self did in some kind of protest. And there was a thread on Kiwi Farms about them, 
But um, because of that, people then said that Kiwi Farms was responsible. So what do you think? Do you think that Kiwi Farms had a role to play in Chloe's? Well, I, I'm going to speak from a, a person who's just, I'm not going to you know, expose my shit online, but just from being through it, it's your choice whether or not you're going to put the to your thing. And that is the place where I'm pretty sure a lot of people who are going to listen to this video have sat there and been like contemplating their own mortality. It's your choice whether or not to follow through with it. There are always going to be people who are going to, you know, lambaste you just for being a human being. There are always going to be people who are going to criticize you just for being a person. It comes from within whether or not that opinion matters or not. I don't think you can account for people expressing an opinion to her in order to... You know, ultimately, she did what she did. Whether or not the internet pushed her into it or not, only Chloe can answer for that. We cannot. I do agree the world is hard and the world is critical. However, I do believe that ultimately a mentality rests in your own hands. But do you think then maybe that sort of what was going on there would in some way count as cyberbullying or harassing and sort of creating a level of vulnerability in that situation, which might have been a driving factor for her? I wouldn't say it's cyberbullying or harassing because we have a rule in the farms not to take it outside of the farms. If someone else gets wind of it and puts it on Reddit, that's not our responsibility. We sit and we laugh privately. If people want to take that to a point where they are fixating on it and taking a small percentage of the internet to be the global truth, that's something they have to address in their own time. That's not something. There are always going to be critics in life, no matter what it is. If you choose to feed into the 1%, that was your choice. If you want to listen to the 99% that are in your court, that's your choice. Okay, well, I think on that note, we can move on to what's hopefully going to be a little bit more lighthearted, maybe it a might little be bit worse, more is questions from the viewers. So I asked people on Twitter and on Instagram if they had questions, and I just picked some of them. There were quite a few on Instagram, not very many anywhere else. So um, the first one that we have is quite a controversial one, which is what is the evidence gathered that suggests associated is malingering? Well, firstly, when someone removes any single negative comment from their, their YouTube page, I'm already questioning whether or not something is going on that you're not wanting people to see. So as far as I'm concerned, the girl has never been consistent with her stories. I've seen multiple occasions of her snooping around in different accounts on Facebook and different groups in order to gain her story that she needs to. And there's this sudden claim of BPD that she's had over the last week where I distinctly remember her sitting on a live stream with Nan saying, I don't know what BPD would feel like. And now all of a sudden she has a bullshit girl. The girl can't keep her lies together. And the inconsistencies have been bolding and bolding and bolding to the point where even her own fan base is starting to connect the dots. And that is where I think a lot of us came to the conclusion that this wasn't real. I'm not saying dissociative identity disorder isn't real. I'm saying what she's presenting is bull. Okay, I think a lot of people would agree with you, and then a lot of people are going to be very angry that you said that. So <laughs> that's usually the case. It, it, the thing is, anger can, like, it, it encourages critical thinking, and I'm all for that. Uh, the other question that we have is, how bad is your life that you frequent Kiwi Farms at all? Honestly, that's my favorite question I think <laughs> I've received to date. Um, I would argue that I, I don't think my life is bad. I think I, I appreciate a, uh, an amount of dissenting opinions, ranging from people that I wholeheartedly disagree with to people that I find myself kind of seeing their point. I really appreciate being on the farms where no speech is moderated. I can see someone for the dumbassery they are presenting, or I can see someone for a very different opinion that I never considered and may not have been allowed in a 
you know, normal social media public space. And I think that's what keeps me there. And I wouldn't argue my life is bad for that. I would argue that I have the power of critical thinking and I like to explore that. Well, then what made you stay on the dissociated and Team Pinata thread is our next question. Well, it started as a private giggle (laughs) between a couple of us, maybe 20 of us on the site. It kind of started as a private laugh. And the more that we started to laugh, the more it seemed to get public. And once Twitter had a hold of it, it was out of our control. I mean, if you watch someone put on a public display every single day of their lives, you're going to take interest in it. I mean, if you want to you tell me that these people are less deserving of public scrutiny than, you know, your favorite influencer or your favorite celebrity is, then I, I beg the question, why? Because if she wanted to put out such a public side of her mental health struggles, surely she should be, you know, consenting to those. And the fact that she would not allow any kind of dissenting opinion on her profiles or any of her comment sections, I think is what brought the most of us to that that thread in particular. I kind of want to just add to that myself, actually, because you said something about why shouldn't she be scrutinized. I've had it said to me so many times, countless times, why are you making drama videos about somebody who's mentally ill? Why are you, is this what you're doing? My thing is I'm making drama videos about a creator who put themselves on the internet. If somebody made a drama video about me, there's absolutely nothing I could do about it. And I couldn't scream, hey, I'm mentally no, ill. You're not because that. you put yourself onto the internet and you put yourself up a public scrutiny the first day you opened up your YouTube account and decided to post a video on it. That is the day that you completely signed your way uh, your right to not being publicly criticized. And if you are to put yourself out there publicly, you are to be criticized. And the problem with Chloe is she doesn't seem to understand that criticism comes with the public figure. And that's where a lot of us started drawing question marks up in her character. Why was everyone so obsessed? They treated it like a job. I love the wording of this question. No, honestly, that that is my favorite phrasing I've had. And it's probably genuinely because we're all a little... <laughs> but uh, seriously, there were so many of us that it was such an around the clock job because we're not all from the same like the same time zones you know so we're some of us are awake where some of us are asleep and it was like watching famous gossip shows but this was a regular person acting the fool publicly i mean who wouldn't be fascinated by that i mean you'd have to be mad to believe that someone wouldn't take interest in that so if you want to call it a job, there was about 30 of us that were laughing at it. You can't say that all 30 of us came from the same time zone. We were just all interested in this person. I, you know what? I, I hate to say it, but grifting people publicly and no one bought, like understanding that this is bull. I think that's why we all laughed so hard. It was a good read in the morning when you wake up to seeing more of the... Uh, the the play progressing, you know, just seeing the new act of the play. So I wouldn't call it a job. I would call it genuine amusement. Right. This question, you've kind of touched on this already um, from the first question I asked you, but maybe if you want to elaborate a little bit more. So what were the first signs that you saw about the Sosted and Team Pinata that seemed suspicious to you? Absolutely no comments that were questioning what was going on. Um, first of all, Nan, I'm, a, I'm a genuinely apologizing for making you put this on your channel, but the girl striked me as something creepy from day one. And the fact that the girl likes snot really solidified that fact for me. <laughs> but um, I'm not going to phrase that any differently. I think the fact that she likes to sneeze on co- during population is a good enough reason to wonder why someone's freaky. We found our reason. As far as Nin is concerned, I hate calling her that. It's just so dumb. As far as Chloe's concerned, um, I genuinely seem to feel something disingenuous about her personality, not her comment section. There was something creepy about the, the way the girl went about it. It just felt like it was a bit of soulless husk of human being 
just grifting all these people to hand over their shekels. Uh, why do you care so much about these people's business, bro? Um, I'd argue you do too, random viewer, because some people read books, we people watch for fun. I mean, you know, people making a spectacle of themselves online is a really source of good entertainment, and it's free. So we, we never laughed publicly, we never made videos about her, we never made a Twitter on the farms. It is not our fault that the viewers decided to drag out what we were speaking about. That is not our fault. We never posted it other platforms or in places that would have been picked up other, like otherwise than on the farms. So it leads me to ask this random viewer, where did you get cold, like, where did you get wind of us? Because surely you must have been digging in just as hard to know what we were doing. Well, the next one then is, do you ever feel guilty? I assume they just mean about the things that you say on the farms and things that have happened and people feeling hurt. Never, because facts don't care about your feelings. And it's not my fault or the farm's fault that Chloe got caught in her own lies. Uh, we didn't make Chloe drown. We just watched her drown. What we did, like what we dug up, could have been dug up by anybody. There just seemed to be this willful ignorance that followed her, and ultimately, we were the few couple that didn't believe the ignorance. I mean, genuinely, if you pick up how many people actually partook in the initial thread. There's probably about 40 people genuinely who contributed to it. So, I mean, if you want me to feel guilty for being one of 40 out of the million subscribers that she has that actually had a dissenting opinion, then no, I don't feel guilty for having critical thinking. So this is the last question that I have from the viewers before I ask you one final question just to round it all up. So this is, uh, how are you so confident about a disorder you've heard about literally five minutes ago? I have suspected OSDD for almost two years now, and I want that energy. Uh, personally, I'm not sold on whether or not it exists. I will just say that what I've been viewing from the general disassociative identity group is just not real. There is no way that someone who has gone through that much strife in their life can hold it all together like that. There's no way. Okay, well, that's the last of our viewer questions. So the very last thing that I want to ask you. So Dissociated is now claiming Dissociated is over. They're now Nin and Co. And they're not doing YouTube. Team Pinata is gone. Do you have any future predictions for them? What you think might happen? And if you think the thread is going to die soon? Uh, personally, I think there will be interest that dies out soon as far as it goes for the thread. I don't think Chloe will come back to YouTube whatsoever because, I mean, mass flag for having an opinion on her. There's no way they're going to give her her channel back with, you know, monetization. So I reckon she will confide herself to just patreon side and interest will die out because her empire has crumbled so it were probably in the dying days of this thread and for team pinata you think there's no hope of them coming back either oh no absolutely not you admit that you want to sneeze on people's when you're you know doing the nasty i don't think many people are going to be willing to come back especially when that uh fish was aimed at my I think even the most cognitive dissenting opinions can admit that that was wrong. I did lie. I have one more question because I forgot I wanted to ask you this. <laughs> it's a, just a little bit more lighthearted. What do you think the fallout is going to be from this video? Because I'm assuming that Kiwi Farmers will get wind of it. I don't know if they'll mention it on the thread, but they'll definitely get wind of it. So do you think you're going to be in trouble? Do you think I'm going to be in trouble? Do you think we're all going to get burned to the ground? Personally, I think this probably will feature on the the thread at some point. I'm pretty sure no one will know who it was. And I'm, I'm fairly certain it will be a topic of discussion for a day or two before it is blown over. However, for you, 
I do believe there is going to be some public fallout for you. However, I do really have to give you, you know, the due diligence. Like, you've really gone the whole way into making, you know, the most uh, whole-rounded opinion that you could. And I have to really commend you on your cojones, on order, like, in order to do so. Uh, I really do personally hope that you don't suffer too much fallout from your channel however i i am willing to um, admit that some of my opinions as a farms user will probably stir up a little drama for you thank you for the the commend commendment i can't speak english um but also you know i um i knew what i had signed up for doing this so any kind of uh, fallout on me uh i accepted that from the beginning so just on a side note, don't send me death threats, please. Thanks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to ask you. So if you don't have anything else to add, I think we can just leave it here. I think the last thing I can add to everybody is I wouldn't see the farms as some intimidating force. There are some really genuinely cool threads on the site. It just depends on how you choose to see it. Um, I wouldn't call any of us bad people. I would call of, um, a lot of us curious people, perhaps. That's a nice way to put it. <laughs> nice sugar-coated way to put it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you for answering all my questions. I'm happy to be here, thank you.